Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Rowan, and today I'm going to show you how to add a static IP to your Azure container. So the reason you want to do this is anytime you restart your container, the IP is going to change. And we want a dedicated IP, so you don't have to keep giving your users a new IP every time you do that. Now, by default, Azure doesn't let you just add a static IP to a container due to it, how it dynamically allocates resources. So what we're going to do is use a virtual network in order to get a static IP for our container. So here's the resource group we're going to start with. And I've already got a container registry and a container instance here. If you want to learn how to do that, I'll leave a link below to another video I made. And this is actually the application we used in that. So if I click on here, this is the container instance. And you'll see we've got an IP address in public. So if I copy that and do slash hello slash Rowan, and this is our container running. If we go back, what we're going to do, we're going to look at this. So our IP address is 20.117.248.222. If we stop it and start it again, I'll just give the page a refresh. And sometimes it can take a second for the container to restart. But here we go. We've got a new IP address. The last one ended in 222, but it's dynamically given us a new one. So the first thing we need to do is go to our resource group and we're going to create a virtual network. And here we'll select the correct resource group, give it a name, and we'll make sure to set the region the same. And we'll create that. Now we have our virtual network. And what we want to do is we're going to go to subnets over on the side. I want to create a new subnet. Now, this is going to be somewhere that our container application can live in the network we've created. So we'll just name this container for now. I'm going to leave everything default. We're also going to create another one quickly. We're going to call that gateway. Now, if we go back to our resource group, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete the container instance we have here. And we're going to create a new one. Container instances. Okay, we've got our resource group, and we'll give it a name. Set our region up. And we're going to go to the container registry that we set up to find the image we want to use. Now, instead of just reviewing and creating it like I normally would, we're going to go to the network and networking type. We're going to set to private. And now we can see our virtual network appearing here. And we've got all of our subnets available. So we're going to pick container. And now we're going to go and review and create. And because it's deploying itself as part of the virtual network, it actually takes longer than it usually would to do a deployment here. So there we go. It took a couple of minutes there, but our resource is done. So I'm going to go to that. And now you'll notice the IP address is private, and it's the one that we set up as a subnet. So what we want to do is we want to link that to a public IP address. So the first thing we're going to do is go back to our resource group, and we're going to create a public IP address for the actual resource. And we're going to set our region and pick the right resource group. And we're going to give it a name. We'll leave everything else the same for now. And we'll just get review and create. And here we go. We've got our IP address here. So now that we've got our public IP address and we've got our container in a virtual network, we need to connect the two together. So we're going to use an application gateway to achieve that. So if I go back to our resource group and we hit create application gateway. Now the setup here is a bit more than you usually expect in a resource creation. We're going to start by giving it a name. That'll be fine. Location. We'll leave the tier as it is now. We'll leave auto scaling on so we don't have to worry about our number of instances. Now we need to select our virtual network, and that is the one we created at the start, the virtual network. And for the subnet, we want to select gateway, and that's why we created that earlier, so that we can have one here. Now we go to front ends, and we need a public IP address, and this is where the resource we created before comes in. Now on the next screen, we need a backend pool. So we'll just call it static pool, and the target is actually going to be the private IP address over here from our container instance. So we'll paste that in, and we'll add that, and we'll go to the next screen. So here we've got our front end public IP, our back end pool that we just set up for the container, and now all we need is routing rules to connect the front end to the back end. We're going to click on add a routing rule, a name, priority it needs to be a number between, as it says here, one and twenty thousand. It's got two tabs here. We actually need a listener and a back end target. I'll listen to the name, let's just say container, just leave all this stuff default. Now we're going to go to backend target. So the target type is backend pool. The target is going to be a static pool. Our settings, we don't have any, so we're actually going to create a new one. We'll just call it routing settings and we'll leave everything default here as well. So now it's got one of those and we can just hit add. And now finally, we can go to our tags. We don't need any tags, so we'll review and create and we'll create that. And this is another deployment that takes a few minutes. And there we go, that took about five or six minutes, but finally it's done. And we'll notice that the front end IP address it's given us is actually the same as the public one we created before. So if we copy this and paste it in here, and we can do slash hello 
slash Rowan. And now we can see our container app is now running from our public front end IP address. So there we go. Today I've shown you how to create a static IP address for your container. It seems like it should be easier than that to do. And these steps have made it hopefully look quite easy for you. But it, I know it can get a bit confusing, especially because we've got five different resources going on here. So hopefully this video has helped you out. If you enjoy this content, and there's anything similar you'd like to see, just let me know and think about subscribing. Thanks very much.